Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to uh, move into talking about dynamic range and latitude uh, and relating them back to the characteristic curve. Now, uh, dynamic range is something that's sold to us by manufacturers uh, as, as, as the be all and end all about all their cameras. Uh, but in actual fact, the thing that you really need to be concerned with is the latitude of the cameras, not the dynamic range. Now looking back when we were shooting film, the film manufacturers gave us film stocks that were a certain ASA rating and they were set up to perform uh, perfectly and give us perfect images if we followed the set of parameters that were specific to that ASA rating. Um, but the thing that we did as DPs is we stretched and twisted and, and pulled those film stocks all over the place to get the visual style and the look that we wanted. And, you know, for example, we would overexpose and pull process. We'd underexpose and push process. We'd bleach bypass. We'd pre-flash the negative. We'd post-flash the negative. We'd pre or post-flash the interpos. We'd pre or uh, post-flash the interneg, just for example. And all of that was to stretch the film around and, and give us exactly what sort of look we were after. But every time we made those stretches to the film, it changed the latitude of the film and we had to understand what the latitude was after all those changes had been made. Now let's bring it up to the digital world. We can make all those same changes to a digital camera, but by the same token, we've got to look at it and understand what those changes do to the latitude of the camera. So I'm going to go through a very brief description of the differences between dynamic range and latitude, how they apply to the characteristic curve. And then in the next video, I'm going to take latitude and apply it to the real world. So let's get to it. Dynamic range causes more confusion in this industry than any other element. And part of that confusion is brought about by manufacturers who are trying to sell their cameras having the widest dynamic range of, of uh, anything in existence. Um, the important thing to remember, more than what the dynamic range of a camera actually is, is that dynamic range and latitude are two totally different things. The dynamic range of a camera is very different to the latitude of a camera. And that is, that's never brought up. Everyone is, is sold on dynamic range and everyone works off dynamic range. But what we should be working off is latitude. But let's talk about dynamic range. What is dynamic range? Dynamic range is the range from the brightest element that can be recorded in a scene to the darkest element that can be recorded. And the human eye can see 30 to 32 stops, which is a ratio of about a billion to one. Um, obviously, no camera in existence can do that. But for a digital camera, the dynamic range is the range from the brightest element that can be recorded by the chip to the darkest element that can be recorded by the chip. That's the dynamic range. So when someone says you've got a dynamic range of 12, 13, 14, 15 stops, whatever it might be, that's a theoretical value from the brightest to the darkest element that, that can be recorded by the chip. Now, let's look at latitude, because latitude's what we actually use in the field and what we need to light by. And the latitude is very different to the dynamic range. Uh, there, and there are two types of latitude. There's exposure latitude, which measures the range between the area in the highlights where you lose detail in the highlights to the area in the shadows where you lose detail in the shadows. So the part at the top of the curve where, where detail gets lost into the highlights and the part in the bottom of the curve where detail gets lost in the shadows. That's the exposure latitude. Now the true latitude is different again. And the true latitude measures the range between the toe point at the bottom of the curve and the knee, uh, the knee point at the top of the curve. So really the true latitude is measuring solely the uh, straight line portion of the characteristic curve. Now the, the part of latitude that's important to us as cinematographers is the exposure latitude. What we need to know is where we lose detail into the highlights and where we lose detail into the shadows. 
And so uh, the, the only way we can learn that is by shooting tests. And we've got to shoot tests at each ISO setting in the camera. And you notice that I said ISO this time. I didn't get uh, caught in the old, old nomenclature and calling it ASA, but I've got ISO, I've got it down now. Um, but we need to, to record the latitude uh, and do tests for latitude in all the a a ISO settings in the camera. So you now we do one at 800, we do one at 400, we do one at uh, 250 and 200 and 160 or whatever the settings are in the camera. But we need to know what the latitude is at each of those settings and generally what you're going to find is as the AS, uh, as, sorry, as the ISO drops down, your latitude should get progressively smaller. Now it's not going to get smaller by a large amount. It might only be one stop or two stops, maybe two and a half. But uh, you will find that there'll be less overexposure latitude and uh, overexposure latitude will fall off a little bit quicker than underexposure latitude will. Um, but the, the takeaway from this is that dynamic range and latitude are two totally different things. When you hear about 15 stops dynamic range in your camera, that doesn't necessarily mean that you've got 15 stops to play with. And the only way you will know how many stops you have got to play with, that is what is the true latitude of the camera, is by shooting tests. If you like what you saw in this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you've got comments, either good or bad, pop them in the comment section down below. I'm always interested to hear what you've got to say. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that subscribe button so you get notified when new videos come online. And once again, thanks for watching. See you soon.